Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician The Civil War, my first time playing the Confederate career mode. Uh, it's going pretty well, I think, right now. We are awaiting our promotion to full four-star general. Uh, they're probably waiting for a spot for me to be able to do that. I had to wait a long time for the major general promotion. Lieutenant general happened almost immediately. Uh, so we'll see what happens. If you have not seen this series all the way up to this point, which has been going on for several months now, there's a link in the description to take you all the way back to episode one. Uh, it is May of 1863. We are in command of the newly christened Army of Northern Virginia, 27,000 men strong. Definitely want to get those numbers up if we're going to have an impact on actually being able to win this war. Right now, we're looking at the numbers uh, and the morale. Uh, national support, I believe, is the number that we've got to get down in order to win under 25 for the Union. It's at 57 right now, so we're going to have to start taking the war to the north at some point. The problem is right now, the Union's still got armies in parts of Virginia that we need to deal with. So I may go ahead and shift my army now that it's campaign season back over towards Stanton, see if I can't take on the Army of Northeastern Virginia uh, and maybe impact the war in that way. There's a lot of other forces that are already up here. Uh, but at the same time, I would love to have an army big enough to be able to threaten Washington. I just don't have it right now. So in the meantime, I'm making some changes to my structure here. I have promoted Nathan Bedford Forrest to command of this division. He's got the, the stats to back that up. I gave him a promotion to Major General. Uh, William Jackson here, not a great division commander, so I might replace him too. But first of all, um, Daniel Reynolds definitely needs replaced. Uh, I think the other ones are all good. Yeah, Henry Davidson's an excellent division commander. And then we're going to actually look at some of our brigade commanders as well because some of these regiments might be commanded by somebody who might be more suited to it. Uh, but I think Reynolds for sure is going to need to be replaced. Let's look at his brigade commanders. All right, not so great. I don't see anybody great there at all. Um, pretty poor, actually. Um, let's look at the brigade commanders in Jackson's division. Same deal. Oh, you know what? Joseph Wheeler... He's pretty famous. That might be the guy. So um, let's give Pegram Wheeler's Brigade. And then we can go right over to Reynolds and replace him with Wheeler. And then we'll give Wheeler a promotion because he's got the, all that fame going for him. Uh, it probably makes sense to go ahead and promote him to Major General. He'll lose a little bit of his stats, but he'll gain a lot of that back. Uh, he lost a little administration. That's mainly the thing. So. We have a bit of an issue. My headquarters is caught in this battle that's going on around Warrington. So all four of my divisions have moved down to Charlottesville, which is meant to be my staging point for moving on Stanton. But my headquarters isn't there, which means I wouldn't be able to lead any particular army. Uh, looks like West Virginia was just formed. I wouldn't be able to lead my army in battle. So my divisions are going to sit there while this battle uh, unfolds. Looks like it might have just finished. So maybe now I can go ahead and move my headquarters down once it's done retreating from that battle that was lost. Headquarters has finally arrived. It is June 3rd. Uh, there's no recruits for me to be able to recruit any new regiments for my army. Uh, there just aren't enough recruits out there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send Wheeler's division out to grab this supply depot right here. We're having issues with supply still. Um, Let's take a look here. You can see here um, we're low on ammunition. We're unhappy. So I'll have to look at my officer corps and see who's making everybody unhappy. But we only have about 83% of rifle ammunition and 71% of the needed artillery ammunition. Everything else is in pretty good shape, though. So I'm hoping if we can grab the supply depot and stock it up, that'll help with the ammunition problem a little bit. So what it's telling us here is that uh, we have, a, have to have a higher command in order to be able to get that promotion to four-star. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't any commands that would be... See, right now our army is still considered a core-level command. There aren't any armies at the army level that I could even apply for. Uh, so unfortunately, I mean, the only option I have is to try and take over this 53,000-man Army of the Potomac. Um, not only do I not have the massive amount of prestige it would probably take to do that, uh, there just aren't 
any commands of that level. Uh, I don't know if we still have policies or projects that need to be undertaken in order to make that happen. It's quite possible that that's the case. Now it looks like organizational reform is maxed out already. Uh, so we we are allowed to have full armies with core. They just haven't been formed by our commanding officer. There's a little bit of re recruiting we can do. Uh, 500 is the minimum size for a new infantry regiment. So we, we're able to recruit one from Texas. It's only going to be a 500-man regiment. But you know what? Some of the regiments I have existing in my army right now are only that big anyway. So that'll be okay. Let's see if there's any other states that have at least 500. There are not. So there's no other. Oh, wait. Here we go. We could get 500 Arkansas draftees. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to take a while for these units to join our army coming all the way from Arkansas and Texas. But uh, I'll give them... Lawrence rifles. All right, so that'll give us another thousand men at least. A couple things have happened. We've gone ahead and moved our army right to the edge of Stanton. I don't know if these divisions are actually still here for the Union. We're going to find out. We also finished our studies about operations, which means our initiative has gone up a little bit. It was one star. Now it's one and a half stars. We're going to keep focusing on that. Uh, studying operation gives us a half a star every time. Uh, so it takes 33 days. So it takes a month to do that, but every little bit helps right now to improve my my biggest weakness, which is kind of the, the weak link in the ch chain at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and move a little further forward, see if we can't grab these supply depots outside of town here and make contact with the enemy if he's there. Uh, my supply situation has been resolved, at least when it comes to Rifle ammunition, we're at 100%. Artillery is up to 81% now. We did make contact. Looks like Irvin McDowell. And uh, pretty even odds. Everything's almost identical. Infantry, cavalry, artillery. The numbers are pretty evenly matched, so this should be a pretty good fight. His divisions are bigger than mine. Let's see what happens. Battle of Stanton, June 14th, 1863. We're coming in from two different locations, but... Our objective is in the top left corner of the map here. Uh, it means if I'm the Union, I'm probably digging in right between these two bodies of water here, or I'm digging in further back right on this high ground at the edge of these woods. We'll see what he does. You can see here, we're almost at nightfall already, and look at how high the ground is. It, it, this is all, basically he's up in a mountain, and if he's smart, that's where he's dug in. I'm not going to get very far before nightfall, though. Uh, so I'm just going to try to move as close to the edge as I can so that we can get ourselves in a better position for the next day's fight. Elements are moving from all over the place. It's uh, end of day. I did get a little bit closer. I'm hoping... Okay, that does open up our options some. That's good. We can, we can unite our forces now all in one place. I can get some of them partially up this hill, which is huge. That means I don't have to worry about them being tired from marching up there at the start of the day. And we'll get everybody as close as we can, and then we're going to send our scouts out. He's definitely dug in in the woods on high ground. It's going to be a tough one. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm better positioning my army. So I'm moving, I'm holding the center. I'm moving Forest Division up a little bit on the north side. I'm moving these two divisions up here on the south side. I'm hoping that's going to allow me to start to see him as I do here. Looks like near Mount Riddle Church, we might get into some combat. Uh, and then I'm going to try to just, in very slow but deliberate movements, start to move forward as I probe for the enemy because I don't know where he's dug in. And we have similar numbers, similar morale, pretty much similar everything. So I want to be super careful here. Uh, I do want to do one thing here, which is to target his artillery. So let's do counter battery fire. See if we can't eliminate some of that artillery before I get close. I don't even know if my artillery can, yeah, they don't really even have the, the range at the moment to reach there. So we're going to have to move up. So as I said, these are deliberate movements. You can see just moving everybody forward at the same time to the same line. 
I don't know why this one unit is attached directly to my army, but it's holding them from moving forward. It's also holding my army commander from moving forward, so I need to get him moved up. It's taking, it's making the, the orders take longer. Uh, and then Davidson is kind of my reserve division at the moment, so I'm keeping him behind the main line. Union starting to react now that I've moved into position. I'm going to send skirmishers forward. I am still doing counter battery fire. That's my main goal right now is to eliminate his artillery. I'm going to bring this cav up here, try and get a little bit of a flank that I can allow him to come into. Bring up some infantry there as well. My reserve's still moving into position. You can see these guys are trying to get up on top of Riddle Mountain, which is a, a big ask, especially for the artillery. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to move this artillery over this way a little bit. If we can get them right up here to where they can fire on the troops that are moving down. We won't have them do counter battery fire. At least once they get into position, I'll probably switch them to the counter battery fire and keep these guys firing on the personnel. He's trying to do the same thing, get around my flank. Uh, so while I've got the chance, I'm going to sacrifice the 1st Louisiana Cavalry, which they're going to become exposed to the 4th West Virginia's infantry fire. I want to try and eliminate this 6th Western Virginia battery if I can get there before his infantry turns me back. I think we're going to be able to do that. It's just they'll be driven off in the process because they're going to take fire from the rear here. As long as we eliminate that battery in the process, I'm good with that. I don't think we completely... Yeah, we took out all their guns. Okay, perfect. All right, first Louisiana will fall back. They only lost 47 men. They've got 900, so they're going to reform. They'll be okay. They'll continue in the fight. Still nothing over on this side. Let's go ahead and have Forrest... I'm going to try to keep him on this lower ground so he's not marching so high. And if we can, we're just going to keep swinging around. All right, looks like the Union's sending more men down this road toward the fight over here. So we may want to get some help over here. I'm going to send Garnet's Brigade over here to cover the left flank. I'll start by sending them right here so that they don't advance too far out. All right, I want to know how we're doing with the counter battery fire. Is it actually being effective is the question. So no guns captured. Are we eliminating? I mean, we've inflicted 35 casualties on the artillery, but I think that was just from my cav. It is. So our batteries have inflicted a few artillery casualties, but not many. Here he comes. He is uh, sending... He's going to try to punch through our lines with a, a column of multiple regiments. Oh, and Garnet did march right out in front of the entire line to get into position. Garnet, that is not what I wanted to have happen there. Let's see if I can still try to get him to pull back. Maybe too late, though. All right, we're sending some force... Or no, this is Jackson's division. We're sending over to help out. Gonna try to hit these guys on the flank as they come in. Forrest is making his move. We're gonna send him forward again. It's about to go down right over here on our left flank. Casualties pretty close so far. We do have the morale advantage, which is big. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and tell Walker's uh, batteries to switch over to fire at will. I just want them to be as effective as possible. And that probably right now means firing on his infantry. Which we're doing with these guys as well. They've got men in front of them right now. Gallon's brigade to move forward a little bit so they're out of the way of the infantry. I'm 
Mostly skirmishers are still doing the fighting right now over here. Let's go ahead and send skirmishers back out because he's a little bit out of range still. Cavalry over here. No. Oh my gosh. Why do you? Oh, because they're, they're taking the road. I gotta tell them don't use roads. Still waiting on Forrest to do his thing. He's got tough terrain to fight over, so or to march over. So I'm not surprised it's taking them as long as it is. These guys have some. Uh, we've got some long range guns here. Whitworths. So they're really pouring it onto the Yankees right now. Bunching him up because he was he was in kind of a big stack column. Most of his force is still back here on the ridge. All right, we're starting to see what's going on up here now. These guys are out of range. Those skirmishers are doing the fighting. The main action right now is McGowan's brigade. About to be Ford's brigade. Casualties are basically dead even at the moment. These are 24 pound howitzers. I'd like to get them up closer to the front. Who's this back here? That is Brian's brigade. Bring him up a little closer to the action. All right, how we doing, Forrest? Run, Forrest, run! Sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, so Forrest Division's almost in position uh, for his latest movement. I'm keeping an eye on their condition. Looks like they're in pretty good shape. Let's send the cavalry over here to just capture this entry point. I don't know if that'll help or not with blocking him from being able to withdraw as easily. All right, I like where we're at. I like how things are going. As long as we fight well and we have switched the balance of the casualty situation to where now he's taken more than I have for the first time. I just got to keep an eye on these guys down here because you know, there's potential here for disaster if he decides he wants to come after me on the flank at all. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and bring Wilcox his brigade over there on that left flank just to shore it up in case he does decide to advance. Yeah, this is... Thankfully, I think they're actually shielded by the hill to where I, I bet the Union can't see these guys at all. He probably doesn't even know that we're back here. So I'm going to go ahead and send one brigade up the middle to take the Mount Riddle objective, and then we'll kind of go from there, bring up the others as needed behind them. Got him bunched up right there. I like that. Oh yeah, casualties are really stacking up now. These guys aren't able to fire, they're just a little bit out of range, so let's go ahead and send skirmishers out. Send Ford skirmishers out as well. And then the surprise is going to come up this road. He, I think he sees our cavalry now because he's starting to send a regiment back that way. All right, I feel good. I feel real good about how things are going. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. We don't need to micromanage anything at the moment. Just because of the hills, eh, all the movement is just slower. Yeah, it's looking good. I like this a lot. I like how this is going. This is the best I've felt about a ba battle in a while. Because we've had a lot of battles where I felt good about the strategy and then we just got beat on the field. Like we got out fired on or, you know, out gunned, out, just out something. 
but this time we're holding our own. We're in a good spot. I think he just was too back too far. He gave me too much room to maneuver, and he gave up the advantages of the high ground. All right, Eighth Tennessee's taking the lead on coming down into this gap. All but got him surrounded. I don't know what he's going to do if he does start to break. All right. McClaws. Where are we going to move his brigade? He's going to have the tough job to go up and over this hill a little bit. I'm going to hold the artillery back just because I know what a mess it will be to try and get it up that hill. So we'll put him, like, I don't know, say right there in the road. Got just a few brigades that are really doing all the heavy lifting right now. But look at those casualties. It's about two to one now in casualties. His morale hasn't dropped a lot though because we haven't started causing anybody to break. I'm starting to have some ammo issues. Oh, that's just a detachment. That's just uh, skirmishers. We've taken this objective. Is that the only objective? I think it is. He's now starting to shift some men that way. He's also advancing some out here, which they're going to get pummeled by this artillery right here. There's no way the 12th Vermont is going to last through all of that. He's right in my canister range. That's going to be a nightmare for them. All right, things are looking good. I think now he's decided against coming at me over there on my right. So really, we just at this point just need to hold. Let him react. Let him be the one to make the move. And I'll sit tight. I think Crutchfield's brigade, where do we want to put him? Up here on the right. Yeah, I'm feeling really, really good about this. Let's go ahead and go to 20x on time. Because I think he's just sitting there. He's moving his artillery up. I don't like that. We are taking some losses there. Let's go ahead and go back to counter battery fire. Now that they're close. Try to inflict some damage on those cat those guns. I'm gonna send these skirmishers forward. Let's send some up from the 68th Georgia as well. We're gonna really go after these guns hard. Try to eliminate that battery. We got five guns there. Lovely, beautifully done. There's another battery up here. I don't know if we'll be able to get at them or not, but we can try. All right, we got to watch the 72nd Georgia. Oh, who was wounded? Fort Delaware battery. All right. All right, here he comes. This is what I was expecting he would do at some point. He would start having to move his right, and that's what he's doing. I want to pull the 72nd Georgia off the line and into reserve. We'll replace them with the 25th Kentucky. No, not the 25th Kentucky. I want the 23rd Kentucky, who's right here in that spot. Okay, how are these guys doing on being winded or not. It looks like they're not. I think they're in good shape. Alright, let's move them forward. We're almost in range, actually, because we've got some Whitfields there. Or Whitworths, I mean. Nobody else over here has them, though. Right, the 
Let's advance. The bar hasn't really moved, even though we're inflicting two to one casualties. Because nobody's really broken yet. So that does concern me a little bit. Oh boy. We've got 24 pounders right here, though. I mean, that canister that they're going to be able to pour into these guys should be pretty good. What are we low on? Probably long range ammo. Boys, pour it into him. Alright, he's really coming at me now. He's actually moved a lot of these units over toward the center rather than over here. Alright, let's dismount. I'm gonna move forward. Try to engage some of these units that are by themselves a little bit. Fire at will. Still two to one casualties. He's up to almost eight percent now. Just got to start causing some of these guys to break because they're just not breaking yet. The good news is I've got reserves where I need them. Honestly surprised we haven't just driven this New, New Jersey State Militia back faster with uh, although I guess it's just six 24 pounder howitzers there. They're actually getting low on ammo now. These guys are idle at send skirmishes out. Alright, we broke the eleventh main. We did take some casualties with a battery though. Actually all of those batteries got kind of torn up. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna send cables whole brigade forward. Okay, let's advance. Crutchfield's firing. At least with the guys that have Whitworths. They may end up being our first to actually get a perk. It's only taken two years into the war to get units to actually have perks. Let's advance with everything we can here. Whew! It's a lot of fighting for very little to have changed with the tactical situation. Although we are driving some of these guys back over here. 8th Kentucky lost their commander. He was wounded. It's right here in the center. Kind of the heat of the action. Alright, let's bring up Walker's Brigade. Oh no, Walker's Brigade's the battery. We don't want to do that. There's just so much kind of in here. That's Pegram's Brigade. Pegram's one of our new brigade commanders. Seeing his first action. Finally starting to drive some of these guys back. I'm gonna start to shift this bar finally. Drive them back, they've got nowhere to go. They'd have to retreat over this way. This is still where most of the fighting's going on. Right here in the center in the open area. This 20th Maryland battery has to have been inflicting some good casualties. Let's go ahead and take a look. See if we can find where they are in all of this. Uh, let's see. That's the 22nd Maryland battery. That's not who we want. We want the 24th. I gotta see where they are in the organization table before I can do that. 20th Maryland battery is Drayton's Brigade of Davidson's Division. Okay. 
20th Maryland Battery, 154 casualties inflicted. Oh, 179, actually, when you count the cavalry. So, yeah, nice job. Keep going, boys. What do we need for a major victory? 31% of enemy casualties. That, that may be unlikely. I'd very much like to win this battle today, though, and not have to have it go another day. I'm not going to get greedy. I'm not going to advance unnecessarily. Although I am going to send some skirmishers forward to deal with this battery. I don't want him sitting there just doing damage. Alright, we're driving a bunch of them back, but it's not really changing the outcome of the lot. Oh, jeez, okay. 25th Maths just drove off one of my regiments over on the left. Looks like he charged in with the Vermont. 12th Vermont. That didn't go well for him. 3,700 casualties for him, 2,500 for me. This is going to probably go another day backed off, but he's not broken by any means. Alright, let's get some fresh units up into this fight. Brian's brigade, send them forward. Now it looks like he's going to try and strike on my right, which means he's kind of leaving the other side open. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting a little more aggressive here. in the gap some. Who was wounded this time? Robertson, Commander 17th Maryland Infantry. 4,600 casualties for him. We're at 12%. He's at almost 17%. His morale is just not dropping fast at all. A lot of units are engaging now. thing is I've got quite a bit of fire superiority. Most places where we're where we're fighting, we've got more units firing than he does. Uh, things did not go well on my left there. Bloody battle. Whew. This thing heated up so much. Uh, 5,500 casualties, 20% for him, 15% for me. Still, I'll, honestly, I'll take that. I was attacking uphill. Uh, he, he was entrenched. I'm not really entrenched, but in a defensive position waiting for me. Actually, where I felt I was the strongest, which was on the left, is where we're ending up having the problem. Trying to keep cohesion as best I can. I think we're just going to run out of daylight. We've lost a lot of regimental commanders. focus now is to try and throw him back on my right, on his left. It seems to be working. We just smashed Burnside. Hey, we've got a perk! First North Carolina. Uh, they've got Lawrence's, so I think we're going to go with um, Deadly Volley for them. There may be others that have perks at this point. It might take a while to find them. 
we'll have to look before we start the next day of the battle. Jeez. He's reformed in his center big time, and he's really coming after me. I think we've lost at least 10 regimental commanders killed or wounded. is not moving, even though he's at 22% casualties. Okay, so we're into the next day of the battle. Uh, both armies are depleted significantly. A lot of units have left the field. Casualties are pretty even. Uh, so what I thought was going to be a pretty easy victory is now turning out to be anything but. We, but we do still have them relatively bottled up. So I just got to reorganize all my forces and just continue to close the gap on them. So we're picking up right where we left off. I was able to reorganize my forces, get the healthier brigades up front. The ones that have been shattered or taking a lot of casualties, I'm holding back. And now we're just going to try to close the gap as best we can here. Send skirmishers forward from the brigades that aren't in contact. I shifted uh, Crutchfield's division's artillery over here so that they can have some open space to fire. Because uh, there just wasn't any over here. Didn't take a lot of casualties on this side for the most part. Got a few more units. Uh, 5th Louisiana is really close to getting their perk. I want to be really cautious here. I don't want to drive the casualties up too high for myself. If I can avoid it. 68th Georgia is taking some casualties. Things are looking pretty good at the moment. I don't have too many units on the line firing against me here. 7th Tennessee is able to fire into the flank of these New Jersey troops over here who are isolated. I've got 6,500 prestige at the moment from what we've done in this battle. I might be in a situation where, if this keeps up, I might be able to take control of that big 50,000 man army at some point. Although, I've been fighting with these guys for so long, I'd hate to move to another army. Alright, he should be at around 30% casualties now. Yeah, he's at 31%. We're at 24%. Alright, he's starting to have a couple units break. That's good. But I'm going to hold the line. I'm not I'm not going to advance. I'm not going to get sucked in. Into oh, man. Nathan Bedford Forrest has been wounded. He's my best division commander. That's... That's not great. Hopefully he's back quickly. All right, we're starting to drive him back. I think we've got this. It's a major victory as long as we don't take too many casualties. We can't go over 26%. We're at 24.4 right now, which means I can't pursue. He's retreating. Awesome. We got it. All we needed was that overnight to kind of reset things. Now, as long as we don't take any more casualties while he's retreating, which we shouldn't because I'm not going to pursue... We've got ourselves a major victory. I've got almost 7,000 prestige. We did lose 7,000 men, but we're driving him back from Stanton, so that's going to help eliminate some of that Union presence in central Virginia, which hopefully is going to help a lot. Let's see the final numbers. All right, 7,000 casualties. We whipped Irvin McDowell, took out all 50 of his guns. We lost 15 of our own. But we did lose Forrest. We'll see how long he's gone for. Got a lot of uh, administration to do now. Uh, just checking out all of our units and uh, seeing, first of all, who is ready for a perk. Uh, so, for example, the 6th the Georgia, uh, they've got a perk assignment ready. I'm going to give them Deadly Volley as well. Any of the ones that have, like, the standard mus rifled muskets, I'm going to give Deadly Volley just because it's really easy to level that up because um, you level it up in short-range enga engagements, and it gives bonuses to volley strength uh, and resistance to high momentary casualties, which I think are really helpful in most engagements. 
Uh, any of the ones who have the Whitworths, I'm going to give like the Sharpshooter perk to. Uh, but we've also got a number of uh, commanders that are going to have to be replaced because they've been wounded in action. Uh, we can wait around for them to get back to duty, but probably isn't necessary. Um, see, like a unit like this one, 1st North Carolina, they finally got their perk, but they're also down to just 300 men. So here's one. Uh, 13th Maryland, we got to replace their colonel who was wounded. Uh, if we can find anybody who's available, it's uh, it's tricky finding available officers, and, and right now there don't appear to be any who are available. So, uh, But with, they have the Whitworth, so we're going to give them the sharpshooter perk, and uh, they get an accuracy bonus, and they level up by engaging at long range, which is something we would typically do with the Whitworths where possible. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a lot of my prestige available uh, for the purposes of getting recruitment offices for the Confederacy. Um, that's going to help push that along. That's going to help with the available recruits uh, for our army. Because right now what we desperately need are more men to be able to recruit new brigades and to grow my army. And I think that's the best way we can do that. It's going to take a little time to, to make that happen. Because uh, right now there's literally 3,000 available recruits in the entire recruiting pool. So Davidson's division has reached elite status, so we're going to give them an elite battle flag. I don't know if any of the other divisions are there yet. No, Reynolds isn't, Jackson isn't, Wheeler isn't. So uh, Wheeler, is that, that must be Forrest's division. It automatically promoted somebody to fill Forrest's role. No, Wheeler we had already done, right? So who is commanding Forrest's division now? Must be Jackson. Decent. Let's promote him to Major General. Oh, it's, it, Reynolds is terrible, though. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, Lane would do a much better... Lane or Lafayette McClaws would do a much better job of commanding that division. So let's go ahead and make that happen. We're going to make that change. We also can give Reynolds' division... They've got a third perk available. So we'll take a look and see what perk we want to give them. All right, I'm going to give them Intelligence Gathering with the Balloon Core. So let's go back in now. We're going to have to start by replacing McClaws with somebody decent. All right, Edgar will do. And then we'll go here. And replace Reynolds with McClaws. Perfect. And then we're going to give... We're going to promote McClaws to Major General as well. Completed our studies again. So now we're up to two stars in initiative. So every little bit helps. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to our actions again. That costs 500 every time we do that. Uh, but it's certainly worth it. And I don't really have anything else that I'm spending on at the moment. But I'm thinking here... Um, that won't really earn us a lot there. Uh, organized recruitment, no. Fundraising, we spent 200 prestige, we could get 500 more. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't think that takes as long. It only takes 10 days to do that. Construction of a hospital is complete here at Waynesboro Bridge, so that's nice for my base of operations there. We're also really starting to see a nice increase in the available uh, fielded manpower. My army has replenished itself all the way up to over 30,000. Uh, so we've replenished a lot, but that also means there should be enough available recruits, maybe, uh, to get some new brigades. Let's take a look. Okay, so Tennessee's got more than 500 volunteers. That's kind of the magic number. Louisiana and Georgia and Florida. So it looks like we could actually recruit four new brigades of or four new regiments of 500 men i don't know how many i'm able to have with my current command level so that's going to put us up over 32,000 men and 74 guns now which is nice so i'm added some new batteries as well all the new batteries we recruit will now have six guns in them instead of four which is what the max was before 
Uh, also re-equipped all those units. I've still got 1,200 prestige and almost $1,000 at the moment. It's going to take a little while for those new units to arrive. Uh, in the meantime, I think we're in a good enough position to where we could probably look to do some fighting again. Um, I'm watching that same unit that I fought before, that same army. They're just sitting over here on the other side. Um, sounds like there was a defeat at Fredericksburg. That's not ideal. So you can see there the Yankees are moving on. They've taken Fredericksburg, which means they kind of have a clear path to Richmond at this point. So that's a bit of an issue that I might need to deal with. But I hate kind of bouncing back and forth. We're into August now of 1863, and uh, who was rehabilitated? Evan Howe, so not a big deal there. Uh, so things are looking up. They're looking better. Uh, let's just take a look at the overall situation. Now 174,000 men in the field for our armies, uh, which is a big increase on where we were before. Uh, morale, our national support's 54 for him, so we still got a long way to go to drop that down to 25. But I think as long as we keep investing in our army and keep upgrading and keep getting skills and keep good weapons and win victories in the field, we can win this war. But I'm going to wrap it up right there for now. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll see you again with another episode. Thanks for watching.